Hey everybody, welcome to our very first episode of Eat Taste Live. Chef Andrew Doyle here, welcoming you into our kitchen. We're also welcoming special guests, Joel Bryant and Taryn Southern. We're going to get some great food going. Let's get cooking. Follow me over this way. Chef Morning, Doyle. guys. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. I'm alive and awake and ready to cook. Are you guys ready to eat? I'm yeah. still waking up, but I think the smells will help. Oh, yes, definitely. Down. We've got some great food today. We are going to do some beer battered portobello mushrooms mm -hmm. with a blue cheese and sage parsnip puree. We're also going to have a little bit of a balsamic glaze with that. That's going to be yummy, delicious for everyone that just misses that fried food, that yummy snacky stuff when they're on that gluten-free diet because they get pretty limited um, in what they're eating. After that, we're going to do some puttanesca. Uh, and Watch I'll explain that. Late. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll explain puttanesca when we get to the entree portion. We're going to serve that with a little bit of uh, fresh halibut that we got in, and it's going to be yummy and delicious. Uh, for all of you joining us, we are doing this. This is 100% wheat-free, gluten-free. This is for people with celiac disease, gluten intolerance, uh, living on just a wheat-free, gluten-free diet for health choices, uh, lifestyle choices. Um, but we really kind of want to reach everybody. We thank you, our supporters. Um, we can't do this without you. And I'm going to stop talking and start cooking. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. We are going to start with the parsnip puree. Um, are you familiar with parsnips? Parsnips are like root vegetables, right? They are. They're, they're kind of like... I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll say root vegetables as well. They're an underrated... <laughs> good, good. For a thousand? Uh, yes. Uh, they're kind of like the underrated cousin of a carrot. Um, these are actually really popular in, um, in Greek and Roman cuisine uh, before the potato was introduced to their culture. Can you see they a raw like, like a carrot? Yes. Would you just like pick uh, it up They're a little strong. They're, okay. Their flavor profile is um, like a carrot and a radish. Yes. Uh, they got a little bit of... Tinge of yeah, sharpness. Yeah. A little bit of... Mm, but it's delicious. And it's great. And good, when you I chop them so. up, they look like... Kind of like bananas, but it's good. They don't taste like that. So, if you don't have a set of these, and I'll 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 tell you, you got to get these. What's that? Knives or parsnips? <laughs> yeah, actually, a set of parsnips should be in every kitchen. <laughs> um, but you know, knives as well. Good knives are very important. Yeah, I don't have I've a good knife. I definitely have the crappy ones. I yeah. go to Target and buy the nine ninety nine kit. We have to like, <laughs> saw yeah. through like the parsnip. Yeah, like, ah. yeah. <laughs> totally. So we've got. We're gonna go to the food cam here. We've got our parsnips cut up nicely. These are going to go over here into the boiling water. We are going to want these to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes until they are very nice and tender and delectable. And the okay. boiling water is all gluten free. Boiling water, 100% gluten free Perfect. in most cities. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's creepy. It, a little bit. Um, so the next por portion of this is going to be the aioli, the dipping sauce for the portobello mushrooms. Aioli is really just kind of a fancy word for mayonnaise. So we're going to make some homemade mayonnaise. Um, one raw egg. That should crack. There we go. Um, have you made an aioli before? No. No? No. Have you had an aioli? I Maybe. may have eaten one. Oh, you definitely have. Yeah. I love aioli. That's it's so my we've, favorite. We've got okay. one raw egg. It's really good. We're going to throw about a cup of olive oil in here. I mean, how could it not be good? I probably I mean, could have just put that in a whole cup on its own. So how you guys doing? Oh, good, good. Oh, we are, so you're putting the whole bottle in there? The whole yep, thing? it's going to be the whole wow. bottle. Yep, see, it's really healthy. Aioli, yeah, that's it. It is. <laughs> it is. We're going to add some fresh basil. I like it when you can tear it. Just I because. Basil. basil, I know. Basil. Isn't it? Isn't Finally, it? yeah, yeah. Do you cook, Jill, for your wife? No, nah, I like, I, I do sometimes. When you guys are Not much. doing your basil, layer the leaves, roll them up nice and tight. We're still cooking. We're going to do a nice thin cut on these. This is a chiffonade. Gets it nice and thin so it gets chopped up beautiful. Do you cook? I am a horrible cook. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. hopefully I'm learning some things. About a teaspoon of sugar Today. goes into this. For my future husband. <laughs> we go <laughs> a little bit of garlic there? in there. And just a little bit of baking soda. It'll kind of give it a little, yeah, a little yeah. fluffiness. We are then. Baking soda keeps me Don't lose your four. ingredients. Don't here lose your ingredients. Nope, there we're good. Is. Everything's right here. 
We're still waking up. It's early here on the West Coast for all you East Coast viewers. You've had your morning going. So what you want to do is really just kind of blend this. And as you'll see as you're blending this, food cam and then you guys, it's going to start to thicken up. That is the craziest blender I've ever seen. I like that. Um, and I added, you know, it, your cord's getting in there. I find <laughs> I find it blends a little bit easier if you uh, add like half of the olive oil and then add the other half once you get it incorporating a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And it's really the last ingredient of this that is going to be is going to be the magic. What is that blender called? This is a hand mixer. Um, Cuisinart makes a great one. Um, you can find them at a variety of different kitchen appliance stores, uh, William Sonoma, things like that. They carry really great models. And then for the flavor, it's just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I feel like we're Charlie Brown and like Linus on the big wall. I know. Like, like, <laughs> just, like, Isn't staring. that great? You could actually charge like five cents for answers. Wait, yeah. For like psychiatry and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Like Lucy? I love it. That looks good already, even though. So this is our basil and balsamic aioli slash mayonnaise. So even though you're a terrible cook, do you like to cook? I enjoy it. I just enjoy messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually good at baked goods. Really? Yeah. See, that's the, I'm not saying I'm surprised that you're good at baked goods. That's the one thing that even after years and years and years of chefing, I am not... Good at bacon, so we're gonna have a special guest for that episode. Woohoo! We're gonna set that over there I'll right have now. I'll be back for that then. Absolutely. Oh, I know, right? Wait, I think I want to have you back <laughs> for a couple goods. things. Although I think uh, baked goods are tougher with gluten free. They're a little tougher to master. They are. You know? They are. They're so like baking in general is just so um, technical, and right. I'll, I'm more of a freestyle kind of chef. I like to, you know, add things as I'm going. Don't worry, we have the recipes on the website for you. <laughs> Check you you can print them out and you can make them. That. I know, it's not really thirsty. Um, so the next great thing that we're going to do for celiacs that they don't get a lot of is a beer batter. And these are going to go on the portobellos. Um, the portobellos, uh, they just have kind of a steaky, thicker, meatier, heartier flavor. Right. Um, and it's going to end up being basically a tempura style. So very light, flavorful. Anyway. I like the beer in it. That's a good... Yeah. I like anything we'll never beer. never complain about that. Yeah. We are, use, we are definitely using a gluten-free beer. Um... So we're good. This is this is white rice flour uh, for the food can. This is the white white rice flour for everyone at home. We are going to again. You want to make sure you're always 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 seasoning. Uh, so a little bit of sugar in this one. About a teaspoon or so of baking soda. A little bit of garlic, just a little. When you're doing um, when you're doing batters and mixes, you want to get all your dry ingredients, then we'll whisk in the, the wet stuff. Um, to really kind of punch some flavor on this one too, we're gonna add grated Parmesan. Oh, it's nice. actually a Parmesan Romano cheese, um, just because, you know, I like to take things here and then go there. <laughs> That's the tag. Ingr in in yeah, there. ingredients without me, ingredients with me, mm -hmm. without me. Mm -hmm. It's a visual thing. There, there might be a, yeah. So here's our um, gluten-free beer. There's many types um, of gluten-free beer. There's a few different manufacturers out there. You can also use cider. Mm -hmm. You can also use ginger ale. Um, you can also use um, water if you want. You just go straight. Seven Up is good because the sugars give it a nice flavor and crispiness. Seven Up batter. What's that? It'd be a Seven Up battered mushroom. Yeah, yeah. You okay. know, just that that clear soda kind of thing. I'll take your word for it on that one. Um, and don't worry too about your batters. Like they're going to start kind of doughy until you get all the uh, until you get all the liquid in. Right. But you kind of want to slowly incorporate it because if you do it too fast, if you just dump it in, if you just dump it in, you're gonna, it's going to be lumpy. And no one likes lumps. I like lumps. Except in mashed potatoes. <laughs> I like lumpy mashed potatoes. I'm a creamy mashed potato guy. I'm a Korean? Creamy. Yeah, creamy. Potato? Oh, creamy. Or Korean, either one. I was going to say, are Koreans big on mashed potatoes? Yeah, pretty huge. Okay, pretty huge. Right, Mostly cool. in Seoul. That's just my morning here and working. <laughs> it happens. All right, so we got our batter going here. We're going to add the rest of the beer in. Smuggle my tea. Score. Good job. <laughs> got my tea over here. Are you gluten-free? And So I try. I try to be as much as possible. I feel much better when I am. Really? Um, yeah, I, I started maybe two years ago because I went to Asia for 
a month and a half and I came back feeling amazing and I didn't understand why and it was because I wasn't eating any gluten products. Oh, there. really? Yeah, it just wasn't it was Interesting. all rice, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, if your so batter like is too thing. thick, go ahead and add just a I little, little bit of water to thin that out. Real beneficial health benefits. Right. Going gluten free. But you're not From all sick. the reading I've done. No, I don't get You don't have like anything. celiac nope. or anything like that? Nope. You know what's funny? Like wheat is just, it's found in just absolutely everything that you wouldn't normally expect. Right. Um, you know, late last night I was like, you know, a little hungry and I decided to just have some tomato soup. Right. Yep. And I ate it and like within half an hour I felt, you know, like three times my size. Which is that is, what you feel like if you don't have, if you don't... Because there was weed in it? Yeah. If you don't yeah. eat it for a while, like it bloats you kind of or like... Um, it's it's different for every people. Like my, my sister, she gets kind of um, eczema. Her eczema flares up. Uh -huh. yeah. um, my dad can get really sick. Okay. okay. And the gluten, gluten. stuff mm -hmm. flares it up? Yep. I'm throwing just a little bit of black pepper oh, in here for some additional good. flavor. Um, and you know, too, like these recipes, like everybody day. watching out there, these are guidelines. You want to change it up, add a little more, add a little less. It's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I'll be, off. I'll be fine. As long as it's delicious <laughs> for you. That's what's important. Unless they write to you and do. say something very derogatory about it. Right. So we've got our point. food can. We've got our, our beer batter here ready to go. I'm going to run over to the fridge and get our portobellos. So what about you? Are you celiac? Or? And our parsnips no, are going I'm beautifully. Enjoy I enjoy yeah. food. Yeah. I, I, I'm on a gluten-free, wheat-free diet okay. as of this week. Oh, okay. I'm on a whole new training program. I'm so hungry. Really? But it's good. But you want energy wise? But are you still eating like rice or oatmeal or anything like that? No, no, you're, no. You're totally cutting out all yeah, the Yeah, yeah. It's been like okay. pure protein. I mean, I mean, I mean it today for sure because it's yeah. just it's just too good. But uh, but it's like that's mostly like getting rid of all the gluten and everything. Yeah. But energy wise, like I'm like I actually have more energy. Yeah. I'm like oh this is kind of nice. All yeah. right. Uh, Chef Doyle, we have a question from the audience. If Absolutely. You don't mind. Uh, what other spice would you recommend besides pepper for the batter? Ooh. Mm. Uh, let's see. I like a Cajun spice in there. That's mm -hmm. nice. Uh, pepper, ginger would be really good in there as well. Okay. Um, I mean, really, once you get the basics of a beer batter down and you have your liquid to um, uh, solid ratio, uh, which we did one cup of rice flour, one cup of beer, you can pretty much add in and flavor it however you want gotcha. and build it to your taste buds. Okay. Um, if you want to throw candy so in there, go ahead and throw candy. So anything with some kick in it. Be. Yeah. Anything with some kick. All right. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, so your portobellos, your when I'm going to, portobellos. when I'm going to cook these, I like to pop the stem out like that. Um, and it's really dependent. A lot of people like these gills out. Here's these, these, these little things here, the gills. Uh, a lot of people like these out. For me, it's depending on what I'm doing with them. If I'm grilling them, I'll leave the gills in. For this, we're going to take them out just so it doesn't soak up too much grease and all i'm doing uh food cam if you can push in a little bit all we're doing is using a, a soup spoon and kind of scraping those puppies out just like that so is that a difference in flavor or anything that, that's just kind of our catch <laughs> what's that is that a difference in flavor or... um if you leave it in you're gonna get a little more mushroom earthy flavor right um but because we're frying these um we don't want those gills to hold too much grease in there and make it make the breading super soggy. Gotcha. Interesting. Because they're super soft and they are little tentacles. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. See, I'm learning stuff today. Isn't isn't that fun? Isn't that when it's the best part? Learning? No. Learning? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Learning depends is, on what it is. I, learning I, I is not just fundamental. I prefer watch someone like you make food for me. And, and then eat it eat afterwards, it. Uh, right? Yeah, that's the fun. And part. learn how good that was when I ate it. Mm -hmm. Like we can do a thing about eating food. If just about just to. just about eating. We yeah, can do that. like a whole show about how to eat. <laughs> properly eat. This is the next important thing here. Um, so when you're going to beer batter something, whether it's meat, whether it's vegetables, you want to make sure you get something on there for the batter to stick to, or else you're going to put it in and just all over the place. It actually does that. It just makes that noise. It, oh, that's, the, yeah, that's kind of creepy actually. Like so we got some more of the rice flour here, and yeah, we're just gonna. Kind of dredge these in here. It sounds like our oil is ready. Turn that Calm down, down oil. So, yeah, Simmer. Oil's getting rowdy. <laughs> Look at that. I didn't, even, didn't even mean to do that. that just well, you know, we did a little water. It's fine. It's good. It is. It's hungry for these mushrooms because you guys are going to love this. 
Well, that's gonna hurt. What's the whole thing we're making today? So we're doing the uh, mushrooms and then... We're doing the mushrooms and you guys are gonna chow on that. Okay. And then we're gonna get things going for the halibut dish. And food can, we're coming over here. We're going to get these in the batter all nice and well coated. And we're just gonna kind of lay these right in here. Oh, we totally make a fire right now. I, I'm not saying that hasn't happened. <laughs> I'm just saying like my... Well, you want to make sure when you're frying at home to have a high temperature thermometer, like a candy thermometer. Uh -huh. um, so that way you can clip it on the edge of the pan and, uh, and monitor the heat. Um, you know, How this, hot do you want it then? Uh, about 350. Okay. I want to go over 350 because then things start to get that bitter kind of char taste on them. So we got that there. That's just going to kind of set there. We're going to come over here, get our hands all washed. I'm sure you guys appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Depends on where they work. It depends. Whenever I cook, I always crank the heat totally up. No, no good? Uh, good if you're sautéing, yes, because sautéing is high heat cooking. Gotcha. I don't pay attention to the numbers. <laughs> it's either on or off when I do it. And that's fine, you know. So we're just going to let these cook a little bit longer. Uh, this is a question from online, if you don't mind, Chef Doyle. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. What kind of oil is being used to fry the mushrooms? That's a great question. Right now, I'm I am using a, a high pomace olive oil. Um, oh. High pomace olive oil will, use, will stand up to the heat much, much better than a lot of the other oils. You can also use a soybean oil. Um, are there gluten-free oils, or is that even a yes. come into play? Well, they, they mostly are. If you start getting into some of the, the lower-end uh, shortenings mm -hmm. and oils, um, they're going to put thickening stuff in it and stabilizers and just crud. So you really want to stay with your better oils, um, your high pomace olive oil for frying, extra virgin olive oil for you know dressings and, and sauces and things like that. Right. That's the best. Okay. You know, a lot of these, like the um, mm -hmm. the mushrooms and stuff, are great for um, if you want to do them as hors d'oeuvres. You know, especially if uh, you want to have some friends over and it just becomes interactive. Uh, you guys want to, you know, have a little deep frying hors d'oeuvre party, fondue, mix in with fondue. You guys can, you know, fry up some of these every Thursday. Every, th yeah. <laughs> Maybe now. Well, you know. Can you throw anything else besides mushrooms in there? Like, is that like do you do broccoli or zucchini? Or? Yeah, absolutely. You okay. can anything that you can get to hold the um, to hold the batter. Right. Um, is delicious. Did I ask you about your show last night? How was that? Uh, it was great. It was good. Uh, for those at home, come on out to Flappers Comedy Club. Me, Brad Williams, Phil, uh, Flip Schultz. It was a when blast. You, when you perform typically there. When I. What nights? Yeah. Uh, it's all over the board. Yeah. Kind of changes. Go to your website and find out. Yeah, go to joelbryant.net. Or right. devingreen.com. She's my comedy partner. Our parsnips are looking delicious. We're going to strain these out. We are going to then put them. You can use the same pan for this. It's fine. It's good. Um, the flavor is going into this, of course. Butter. Just regular butter. Um, unsalted. Always unsalted. Why is that? Um, uh, just so you don't throw off the flavor of your food, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to add it. You want to be able to control the salt that you're putting in. You want to be able to add it to your taste, not someone else's. Um, so just always make sure that you are buying unsalted butter. It's good for blood pressure too. Mm -hmm. It's excellent for blood pressure. That was my contribution to the whole health thing. Good Actually, you know, it, what is really healthy and, and useful for blood pressure or high cholesterol, you can get the nice expensive medications from your doctor or a tablespoon of olive oil every day. Um, a lot. Really? Yeah. Just like eat it? Yeah. The right. cholesterol that's in olive oil is a high, is a good cholesterol, and it actually lowers bad cholesterol, and it just kind of balances everything out. Is it good, or does it, does it just kind of go down? Like, it takes a little it, getting used to. Chase it with something. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to. Okay. Have your glass of uh, lemon water there, you know, ready to just kind of... <laughs> I like how you assume, I, like how you assume yeah. I have a glass of oh, lemon water so you're... I was about that, though, like, if people taking a tablespoon of olive oil, and they would actually lose a lot of weight over time, because it also makes you full and coats your stomach. And oh, really? So yeah. you're just not hungry. digestion and all these things, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're going to add some sage to this. You do it like an hour before a meal. It makes you less hungry. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to take that because this new diet I'm on, I'm starving. Where can people find uh, Taryn Southern online? 
TerranSouthern.com. They or, should know that, though. More importantly, YouTube.com slash TerranSouthern. Because I've been putting out weekly videos. Oh, so that's nice. So I have added in the sage that I just <laughs> cut and Gorgonzola. Okay, I so see. for everybody watching, Gorgonzola blue cheese... Um, <laughs> There's a lot of speculation out there whether or not blue cheese is safe for celiacs because of the mold culture that's in there. They've actually stopped using um, bread cultures for the mold in the blue cheese and stuff, so it's fine. Um, I've been using uh, a particular brand of blue cheese, which we can tell everyone about on the website. Um, for years, that has been absolutely free and delicious and, uh, well, not free, but gluten-free. <laughs> free of gluten. <laughs> and delicious. Free blue cheese. Get the heck and, out of here. Uh, right. has, has just worked out very well. They're a great, solid company. They make great cheeses. Um, we'll get that info to everybody as well. I am going to get the pasta going. Let me have a quick question. Uh, uh, is there another kind of cheese that you recommend for those who don't like blue cheese? Absolutely. Um, you can go to the Parmesan, you can go to Romano, you can use provolone. Um, Something with that Italian kind of bite to yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Uh, there's Stilton's out there that are really good. Um, I actually uh, have done it with a mango ginger. And there's a lot of ginger uh, carrot purees that people use. So if you use a mango ginger cheese with the parsnips, it has a nice. There's a mango flavor ginger cheese. That sounds amazing. It is. That sounds crazy. Incredibly amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We we're gonna have to use it now. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's go. I've, I've done an ahi uh, an ahi sandwich, and we put the mango ginger cheese. Oh, on that it. sounds good. Um, so the pasta we're using today is a brown rice pasta. Um, you can find it just about in any store now. Um, there's different kinds of gluten free pastas. Um, I like the quinoa pastas um, as well as the quinoa grain, but they actually do a pasta version as well. Um, the brown rice pastas are pretty popular. They're super easy to work with, um, and they cook pretty much like regular pasta. Okay. You, know, you just want to get them in there, stir them, let them do their thing. And, like the same and length of time? Happy. Like the same length of time and everything? Um, they vary depending on how thick they are. Right. Um, I, I, I've... The thing about the brown rice pastas is they'll go from not done, not done, not quite done. We're done. There's like no, it goes from like a little bit of a, of a bite to it to mush. So it's, it, and you got to kind of pay attention to it once you get it to that point where you're tasting it and, you know, you and there's still a little resistance. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you test pasta by taste or do you test it by the throwing against the wall trick? Yeah, there's no throwing it against the wall here. I, I, my, I've, I've had family members that have done that. Right. Um, I've had friends right. whose family members have done that. I have never really, I mean, really the best way to tell if something you want to eat is done or seasoned the way you want Put it in your is mouth. to, yeah, taste it. You know, that's, Makes sense, that's I guess. pretty much the most reliable source right there. Is what you're gonna eat. Oh, uh, look, Tanner, look what he has now. He's got, He's got the hand <laughs> blender. So, <laughs> once you get your butter and blue cheese in here, we're just gonna puree this. It'll mash up nicely. Um, and you want to get this to the consistency of mashed potatoes. I'm pretty sure my sound guy is loving this right now. Oh, yeah. We shouldn't talk about anything important right now, right? About anything what? Anything important. <laughs> well, you know. Or maybe now we can talk about like politics and religion while there's no like, <laughs> while, while there's cover? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> now would be a good time to tell us your life story. I'll keep one. No, you don't have no, enough uh, blue cheese in there. Yeah. Not enough butter or blue cheese in there. Okay, so as you're making this for friends and you get it to the consistency you want, when you're cooking for friends or anybody, you want to make sure you're always, always, always... You guys are going to be really happy. Really? That's all I'm saying. You guys are going to be really happy. I hope so. I'm going to add just a little more salt. I'm already happy I bought those mushrooms. Yeah. I don't know. And we're going to add a little bit more pepper. And again, um, for you at home, uh, the recipes on the internet, season it to your palate. These are all based on my palate. It's got a little bit of experience. Do you eat out mostly? I eat out a lot. Do, do you, you have to ask for gluten stuff when you eat out? Or do you try to like... Well, it's just, I just, yeah, I just try to stay away from it. I mean, it's and easy I in LA, Yeah, I it's guess, fairly easy. I mean, again, like rice and there's, there's quite a bit of grains that don't have gluten in them. There are. So, there so are. I feel like as much sushi as I eat, I'm, I'm pretty safe You're good. There, You're safe. You know? oh, I love so sushi. I'm going to plate this up for you guys. What about you? Do you eat out a lot? Yeah. 
And, you know, we get a lot of comments of people, they, they'll look at some of the food on the website and they'll be like, man, I, I don't know, that just looks too fancy. I'm not sure if I can make that. We're not doing anything special here. You know, what? I'm not I'm not throwing up the space shuttle or launching any satellites or a satellite or anything food like that. Goodness. What is what what did you just put on the plate? What's the decoration there? That is a balsamic glaze. Um, it's balsamic vinegar reduced down um, until it's a syrup. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's just a, is a cooking mechanism, right? When you reduce it. Yes. Okay. Yes. There are um, nice. there are glazes that you can find in the uh, in the vinegar section like the vinegars and olive oils area right. of the uh, of the store um but that's not just for decoration that brings flavor with it too right yes oh Thanks absolutely okay. um i use this brand mm -hmm. which match the bottle so we got our balsamic glaze we've got our parsnips we're going to throw our mushrooms on top here it's so fancy i know it's all about the presentation. That can usually uh, make a good dish or a bad dish good. So if I made this for well, there's, a... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a thing in, in, in restaurants, a mantra, I guess. You know, you, um, you eat with your eyes. Right. Um, so that's, that's, why, that's why we make it pretty. It's really not going to affect the quality or the, or the flavor. I mean, if you don't put good food on a plate, it's really not going to matter how you... Uh, how you put it on the plate. I think that's why we eat out a lot, because my wife loves to cook, but she's uh, got awful at it. And this she admits that. She admits it's like funny. it's nothing. But she likes to, she's creative. Yeah. So she'll like make like like steak, but like with Fig Newton feet on it, like little turtles. She'd be like, look, I made turtles for you. That's really and it's like, cute. But that's not, that's like, not a good, good. thing. Yeah, it's not tasty. <laughs> she likes to spell her name in like Thousand Island dressing on like pasta dishes. So that was just our little herb blend. I like taking fresh herbs whenever I'm cooking. Basil, thyme, oregano, uh, rosemary. Chop it mm -hmm. all up. Have it in a little bowl. You can do that and cover it and keep it in the fridge for... You can keep that in the fridge for a few days and just use it. Worst case scenario, it dries out and you just have your dry herbs. So now we're going to take this balsamic mayonnaise that we made. We'll just do a little drizzle. And then we'll do a little puddle for you guys to dip in here. Oh, thank you. That does look that. fancy. So fancy. It's like a real fancy. meal. And then, here's our finished plate there, food cam. There's your fried portobellas with balsamic glaze and balsamic aioli. Are we ready to eat it? You guys oh are ready to gosh. eat. Ooh. I'm so excited. So we just go for this? Yeah, <laughs> just, just, right. just go for it. We're not ruining it. I know. Proper on a show like I have the worst uh, table manners, so like it's just you and a fork and go to town. Yeah, I, I totally do. This is, and that's okay. Part of my curse. And ideally, when you eat it, you kind of mix it all into one forkful. You can, yeah, absolutely. When you do that, you're gonna get. Um, oh wow. You're mm, gonna get all awesome. the flavors kind of marrying together. You wouldn't know it's gluten free. I didn't expect that. That's good. You enjoying that? Mm-hmm. The batter is oh, awesome. enough cheese. Thank you. Yeah, the batter's great. I steal a paper towel here. And sometimes you can get that gluten-free taste. Yes. And stuff. And this does not. That's one of the it. thing, like with uh, gluten-free breads out there. Um, once you go on a gluten-free diet, it's I, I've called it the death of uh, the death of peanut butter and jelly. Because mm, no. um, <laughs> there, there isn't really there isn't really a gluten-free bread out there that you can just eat uh -huh. um, without toasting it or grilling it or or making it not plain right um and that's just that's just one of the the hurdles that we have to get over and that's really kind of why we're doing this because as we're finding products out there um we really want to inform people and keep people informed about what products are out there that are going to be tasty and delicious for them Dude, this is so good i know let me ask you uh chef doyle if i may yes uh personal question when you come up with a dish do you know what you're making or do you start with like a base and work around it or like like how's something like this with these um, flavors come together or you just know in your head like oh i bet balsamic works with yeah this. it's it's been a matter of um cooking with ingredients for so long as you you start to get used to different flavor profiles mm -hmm. um for me there's just something about balsamic and blue cheese that just marries so well together They're very um, savory super savory mm -hmm. and then the fresh herbs on top of that with the blue cheese um, so you start doing different uh, 
profiles and flavor combinations and it's just deserves certain flavor profile. I totally get what you mean about flavor profiles. Like once I discover a new flavor combination, I will obsess with it for months. Like mm -hmm. when I go out to eat, like roasted Brussels sprouts done a certain way, I'm yes. obsessed. Mm -hmm. Or like now, tequila with the spices. Yeah, 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 yeah tequila. Yeah, Pop we get it. I don't order my tequila drinks any other way now because I'm so I love that flavor profile. Right, I'm sure right. I'll get tired of it, but like, what are your favorite flavor profiles? Oh wow! Um, again, like anything with actually lately, it's funny. Like tastes have changed. Uh, blue cheese has become a very popular one that I've just started liking. Really, in the last three years, I used to hate it. Yeah. Uh, then I started eating it with like steak and some balsamic stuff, and I was like, wow, this is. Because you cut it with some, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. So blue cheesy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, nice. Putinesca is actually, it translates in Italian as women of the night. The history, <laughs> be, well, <laughs> the history. It's a bit of an onomatopoeia, actually. Yeah, the, right? <laughs> well, the history behind this, it, it literally translates into, um, into, into women of the night. Uh -huh. And the history behind it is where the men would work and then where they would go home in between where the... Women of the night were. The houses, right? Uh -huh. And they would make this and put it in the windows to lure the guys into the thing. Oh. And then, you know, everyone was happy and went home. So we're going to move on to our Putinesca here. We are going to start with our seafood. Is Putinesca, that's the whole dish or just the sauce? Or is it... Putinesca is the sauce. Um, the thing gotcha. with Putinesca is you can use it really on anything. Mm -hmm. um, it goes great with chicken. It goes great with... Um, with pork, I've used it a on a beef roll before. But you can throw it on rigatoni or anything else. Absolutely. Why do you use different pastas in pasta dishes? Textures. Really? How, how you want it? How you want it to hold the um, sauce? The sauces whatever. and gotcha. stuff. Um, what are your favorite pastas? I'm just spaghetti, pure spaghetti. You like spaghetti. Yeah, Straight up spaghetti. Basic. That's it. Old school. Uh huh. I like the shells, like macaroni do you? shells. And macaroni love, shells are good, but. I love uh, penne. Like that, the, it's like a tougher texture. It feels like it's a tougher texture. Yeah. Than so you have a weird thing with spaghetti. pasta. It's got to be spaghetti or not. Okay, so That's we've really got um, food no camp. Sense. This is our halibut that we're using. And like I said, you can use chicken, you can use beef, you can use whatever. Uh, Putinesca is the sauce, not necessarily the dish. Um, again, flavor everything. Joel, I think I've told you before, always flavor from high instead of low. Oh, right, because it spreads out the spices as yeah, opposed to going low Yeah, if you flavor down it. here, you're just getting a little pile of salt and pepper here. If you're mm -hmm. up here, you know, you're getting a nice even... I made lemon pepper chicken this week, and I did that. I flavored from up on high. Yeah? I remembered. Did you see, did you see a difference? I did. Excellent. Uh, question from online, if you don't mind. Absolutely. We love our questions from online. You want to ask this one? Oh, it's okay. I can't really see it, so oh. you have to. <laughs> if someone wanted to use fish, what else besides halibut do you think would get the best flavor? With putanesca in general, or, you know, if we're doing putanesca, um, salmon holds up pretty well to some bold flavors, um, mm -hmm. so you're still, you know, you're still able to taste, taste the fish. I wouldn't go with a, a white fish or a cod because the sauce would overpower it. Mm -hmm. um, all you taste is the sauce the whole time. All you would There'd taste no is the sauce the whole time, yeah. There'd be yeah. no difference. You could put it on there with styrofoam. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that would be... That'd be a sin, I think. <laughs> it is. It was on the, the third tablet. Yeah. It was. A, <laughs> thou shalt not. <laughs> right, right. 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 Well, yeah, you know yeah, the thing. Here, yeah. Here's some fun stuff with halibut. Um, there's different kinds. Uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific breeds of halibut can get up to ten feet mm -hmm. long, six hundred and fifty pounds. Different flavor. It's it's not as tender. Yeah. Um, and I mean that just scares me. I never want to see a ten foot fish. Agreed. It should just be in a tank on my counter or in a pan frying and delicious. And that's like the role of a fish <laughs> in life, is it? Just mm -hmm. swim, swim, delicious, maybe a Disney movie, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Th that's the role it's of a fish. pretty narrow existence. This is a California halibut that we're using um, for the food cam there. This is a California halibut. It's going to be a little sweeter, a little tender, a little more tender. Um, a little more laid back. Yeah. Liberal. He's chilling. Mm -hmm. He's on the... Never mind. We can't. All right. <laughs> So, uh, over here at the stove, right into the pan. You see that pan sizzling hot. Uh, you want to do that so you're, searing, you're um, sealing in any, um, you want to seal in the juices. You don't want it to dry out while you're cooking. Um, so, hot pan, we'll sear the meat, seal it in, and that's awesome. So you make like a, like a protective force field around it when you cook <laughs> it, and then, it, then you cook it, and then you turn it down and it cooks the inside of it? It's like a shield. Like a shield, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
This will cook through. The thing I like about halibut is a lot of the fillets are nice and thin, so they cook nice and evenly. Right. Um, it's difficult when you get a piece of fish that's like this and then like that. See, I always feel like that's what happens to me, and then I don't, I don't cook the inside of the middle enough, and it's all raw and weird. Like that it's happens. wide on one side. Yeah. Yeah. It's cooked on one side. Uh, with fish, um, salmon, halibut, the and swordfish particularly, I like to go medium with them. Um, just so you don't kill it. A lot of people, you know, when I first started presenting uh, salmon at medium, were like, ah. but it, it's delicious. It, it holds the flavor profile. It's not bad a for you. More. You won't get diseased or no. Medium will will take care of anything like that. Uh -huh. um, but what you do, and even with red meat, when you pretty much if you go beyond a medium or a medium, you're killing all the good enzymes and everything that's in the meat that helps you with digestion, that helps you with iron, that helps you with everything else. Mm -hmm. So you want to. Especially like, you know, red meat and then people are like, red meat stays in your body for 10 years. Well, if you cook it to leather, it's going to just as it like you ate your jacket. Um, so you want to, I, I just recommend not doing red meat over medium. And again, you got all the vitamins, the you enzymes. Do you recommend doing it so over medium or? Not over medium. Oh, so where do you, what, what do you do it over? I like to pretty much just walk the steak through the kitchen and show it where it would be cooked if someone else was eating it. Got it. So medium, medium rare would be okay. You go yeah. real red yes. with it then. I do. I yeah. do. Um, if, as long as it's warm, <laughs> yeah. seared and warm for me, I'm good. Um, yeah. I haven't died yet. So we're going to check our fish <laughs> nice. at that. Knock on wood, you got more episodes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, you do your beef, you make it all up. Brown all the way through? I eat very, very, very little red meat. Oh, really? I'm almost exclusively not uh, red meat either. But uh, if I go to a really nice restaurant where I know the meat is good, for yeah. our um, Putinesca, for you guys watching at home, dice right, throw right, right. tomatoes over here on the food cam for everybody. Uh, I, where they know what they're doing. I use black olives. Like really nice. Um, you can use Kalamata olives. Yeah. You can use green olives if you prefer those. There's a difference too. Um, we are also going like to use capers. These are the tiny capers. You get the big ones. I like the tiny ones. These are great salty little bundles of food happiness. I love capers. I'm addicted to these I love things. capers, yeah, for sure. Uh, red onions right here. You can use white onions. I like red onions. They're a little bit sweeter. Um, just have a better flavor. And then we got little baby fishy anchovies. And these are delicious. I like anchovies and Caesar dressing and this. And that's about it. I like them like out of the can. Do you? Yeah. I kind of grew up with a funky palate. My mom made them that way, too. Wow. Yeah. Olives. And this is going to go over the into this pan. It's over. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you come from. Our you anchovies. Yeah. Coming in the pan here. You've been out here a while, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to want these to heat up. We're from New Mexico, same thing. So our fish is fishing along here. Um, a lot of people want to know, like, how do you know when something's done when you're cooking it? Uh, mm -hmm. Fish, steak. Um, I use the hand method. You'll see me poking it a lot. Um, okay. A loose fist uh -huh. is a rare, um, kind of a, a, a loose closing of the fist would be a, a medium. Okay. And then a tight fist is kind of along the well done. Wait, what does that mean? I don't uh, know for, the, for the temperature of your meat. So yeah. this, this is close to raw. So if you're, like if if you you're checking your, your meat like this. Yeah, if you're touching it and this it is, feels. This is kind of a raw. Oh, feeling. got it, got it, got it. Um, a loose fist would be more of a medium, and then a tight fist is... That is very subjective, sir. <laughs> I would not know how to do that. Well, All you right. have blown your hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, everything's right. well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, as opposed to my method of cutting it open while I cook it to see if it's cooked on the inside? Yeah, you don't... Because then all the really juice work. comes yeah. out and you're... Yeah. Yeah, that's how I do it. You're okay. It. I'll use, I'll use the hand method now. Um, I left my spoon over here. There we go. So for the food cam following along, what you're going to see is a lot of splattering and burning of my pan. Um, you'll see that the anchovies, as you're cooking, start to kind of break up and dissolve and just kind of get in there with some yummy good goodness. We're going to add the tomatoes at this point, get those stewing in there, and I mean, come on. Can we really do this without garlic? No, have to. You don't have smell camera. Over need. here, with the food can, we got some nice garlic here. I think we're gonna go about. We're gonna go four cloves of this. And we're just gonna get this nice and sliced up. We all have breath mints this morning, right? 
flint? Hmm? No, we're okay. good. Man, I'm telling you, I got these. I'll show these to you later. I got these in yesterday. The garlic? No, well, yes. Uh huh. You know, because we're always cooking fresh. Um, but even the uh, these knives came in yesterday, and they're just uh, beautiful. Oh, brand new. Yeah. He's really into these knives. I get. I am. <laughs> I am in love with it's like these. Like a toy. Either that or they're. So uh, I'm just. I'm just going to go ahead and thank Vustoff right now for these knives because they are beautiful, and we're happy to have their support and Logitech support and Cuisinart support. Um, they've all been just super generous with helping us, with helping us out and getting this, you know, on the air for you guys at home worldwide. You know, we've hit like just about every continent except Antarctica, Antarctica and I don't really count that anyway because they wouldn't have fresh there? things. I, mean, I don't know if penguins are on a gluten-free diet. They don't. They aren't. Yeah. Um, so you're getting your ingredients watch the, here. Watch the movie. We got our garlic, our olives. So that's your sauce, right? Back on or the, your... This is going to be our sauce. That's going to draw in a bunch of Italian soldiers if it's done right. It absolutely is. Okay. Our capers and our onions are going in there. We're going to get these to high heat. And get that cooking. Fish is going beautiful. We're going to grab our pasta tongs. And we're just going to kind of toss this all together. going to loosen the pasta back up. The pasta is now going to pick up all this flavor, all the juice that's in the pan. That's can you, why use, can you do metal on pans like that? I think you're not supposed to. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not going to hurt it. I mean, unless you're like really jabbing it in there, gotcha. um, it, it's, it's not going to hurt it. You'll be fine. Um, you know, and Teflon pepper, it's, a, it's flavor. Right. <laughs> a little Teflon flavor in there. A little Teflon Makes flavor. Makes it go down easy. Now the last little kick, are you okay with a little bit of spice? Love it. All right, cool. Last little right, kick on Putinesca are these red pepper flakes for the food can. Uh, we're going to just hit this with some red pepper flakes like that. That'll give us a nice little kick. A little bit of lemon juice. We'll just let that go down there. A little bit of lemon juice. And I'm going to go back to the butter, and the butter is just going to make a nice little saucy glaze for us. And that's back there. The beauty of cooking in a, in a home kitchen for everybody. So we're going to get this all nice and incorporated. Are you allergic to anything? No, I don't think so. No? You haven't had anything yet? I feel you... like everyone's allergic here in, right, <laughs> right. in California. Yeah, there's like always like something. Like, there's like the, I think there's a real difference between allergic and sensitive. And yeah, like, yeah, totally. You know, like I have so many friends that are allergic to everything. I'm like, no, you're sensitive. If you're allergic, you're you'd start having a reaction. Right, like you, know, you could like die if you would, ate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like you're, you know, you start having... <laughs> you'd have something physically noticeable that you yes, just don't like. Exactly. Oh, it makes me sleepy. It makes me have flatulence. <laughs> That's sensitive. It makes me gassy. Yeah. I'm allergic to Mexican allergy. food. Yeah. And you know that that song is why you're here. What song? That one song. I think I farted? That one, yes. All right. <laughs> I make songs on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually saw that. I was watching the behind the scenes. Yeah. And then when you were like, yeah, it's gluten. I was like, oh. yeah. Keywords. They stick gluten out. Gluten no and matter, dairy, actually, to be honest with you. You know why that happens? Why? Dairy and wheat have the same receptor sites in the small intestines. The wheat, if you have an issue with it, kills the receptor sites in the small intestines. And instead of the structures in the small intestine standing up, they, they, um, they die and they lay flat. So then there's nothing in your uh, digestive tract to process the dairy. Mm. So if you cut them both out, then that allows the... A lot of um, family and friends that I have, and a lot of people that I've talked to, um, when they get the wheat out, they can start to tolerate dairy. Dairy better. Mm -hmm. So it's just more about... That seems about right, actually. I've cut a lot of dairy out of my diet as well. Like, really? I drink only almond milk. I don't drink regular milk. I haven't had regular milk in years. Almond looks good though. Yeah. Do you still get your calcium and all that stuff? Don't you need dairy? Isn't that one of the four food groups? Uh, Part of our pyramid? Well, our pyramid's pretty. 
it's been skewed. The past it's years. a little, it's a little grain heavy. Let's be honest. Right, right, right. right. I mean, it's a little 1950s. If we're really looking at like an ideal diet, it should probably be vegetable based. Vegetable based. You right. Know, like, like, if old. you, that's where you get so many minerals and nutrients. There's calcium in like a lot of leafy vegetables. Actually. Right. I tend to follow more of a Mediterranean diet myself. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of just freshness. Yeah. Um, Nuts, that's what my doctor said. My doctor said do Mediterranean diets. It's because so that's the way better. to do it. So I mean, there's just I just think there's too much emphasis on dairy and and uh, grains. and grains in our diet. Right. I cut milk out and I feel ten million times better. So now the only way I eat dairy is when it's like really good cheese. Okay. And I think the aging also helps my stomach. Food cam. Aging Here's our cheese. plated like, halibut. Oh, okay. Really if water. I drink milk, I'm like. <laughs> <sighs> Here you go, guys. Thank you. There's this a question looks online. This looks great. Yeah, um, wow. what's, our, what's our online How question? How much sauce is too much for this dish? However much you like. Again, to it's personal palate. flavor. Um, I like to just have it within there. Um, again, the, the pasta is your support. The sauce is your, the sauce is your uh, kind of accent for that. And, uh-huh. then, and then you've got your fish. This is great. And That's, I'll be right to back have. to join you guys. Mm. I'm going to say goodbye to our home viewers at home and uh, make a couple of... Uh, announcements and then i'll be right back okay all right so everyone at home that is our first episode we did our beer battered portobellos we did our halibut with puttanesca sauce Mm. Uh, we had the balsamic glaze with the uh the portobellos the uh basil and balsamic garlic aioli Mm. we want to thank you very much for joining us we can't do this without you continue to support us we'll keep bringing you delicious gluten-free food and some amazing fun guests to join us and uh answer your questions That's it. Join us next week here, Saturdays, every week, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Eat, Taste, Live, live. I'm Chef Andrew Doyle. We will see you next week.